TV84. I'm your gracious host, Trendsetter. And today we're going to talk about the Great Resignation, right? This is a wave of people resigning their jobs in record numbers amid a demic. You guys got to know I got to speak in code because YouTube likes to censor. And this phenomenon has been happening for about the last six months where employees are quitting their jobs amid what has been deemed by expert um, a recession greater than the the greatest recession that we've well they call it the great the greatest recession greater than the great recession of 2008 and I decided you know what what is going on so I decided this seems a bit odd to me typically people quit their jobs during times when the economy is good because then there are a lot of jobs and uh, careers available but to have so many people quit their jobs in record numbers because of when we are in the middle of this you know situation i decided let me do my research and i'm going to give you guys a little bit of a different take than some of the experts but i i do want to get into this here okay so this guy is uh by the name of jonathan caballero okay jonathan caballero made a startling discovery last year. At 27, his hair was thinning. The software developer realized that his life was passing by too quickly as he was hunked down at home in Hyattsville, Maryland. There was so much to do, so many places to see. Caballero envisioned a life in which he might end a workday with a swim instead of a long drive home. So when his employer began calling people back to the office part-time, he balked at the 45-minute commute. He started looking for a job with better remote work options and quickly landed multiple offers. I think the demic has changed my mindset in a way like I really value my timeline. Time now, Caballero says. Now let me stop this right here. And I've talked about this before in other videos, but the the situation starting on of march of 2020 was an opportunity for a lot of people to reevaluate their lives to be self introspective self reflective right including myself and this is the chance or the time where you can actually really level up especially if now you were regulated to working from home or you were on unemployment this this is the best time or would have been the best time to really really start looking to level up not just with maybe choosing a new career but physically getting in shape that's you know what i'm working on that's what i've been working on as most of you know uh financially last year I made more money than i ever did in my life because i started to invest more into cryptos and we're gonna talk about cryptos as well along with gold and silver but let me get back to the article as demic life recedes in the usa people are leaving their jobs in search of more money more flexibility and more happiness many are rethinking what work means to them how they are valued and how they spend their time it's leading to a dramatic increase in resignations a record four million people quit their jobs in april alone according to the labor department in normal times people quitting their jobs in large numbers signals a healthy economy with plentiful jobs. But these are not normal times. The demic led to the worst U.S. recession in history, and millions of people are still out of jobs, yet employees are now complaining about acute labor shortages. We haven't seen anything quite like the situation we have today, says Daniel Zhao, a labor economist with the job site Glassdoor. The 19 situation has given all kinds of reasons to change directions. Some people, particularly those who work in low-wage restaurant jobs, are leaving for better pay. Others may have worked in jobs that weren't a good fit, but were waiting out the 19 before they quit. And some workers are leaving positions because they fear returning to an unsafe workplace. Now, let me just say this. One thing I know about people is a lot of people, especially the Generation Z and Millennial Generation, they are not like their parents where they want to work, you know, 50 to 80 hours a week, right? Um, a lot of this generation, gen millennials and Generation Z, even though they're two different generations, but they have what I call wanderlust. And what I mean by that is they have this um, 
sense of adventure where they want to travel. They want to explore the world. And let's keep it real. There's some people, they want to live that Instagram lifestyle where, you know, they're traveling the world and uh, living as influencers, right? So a lot of people live in that wanderlust situation. And while I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing, it's not a good thing either if you're working a job, but then, you know, you, you're you not really working the job because you enjoy it, but you're just working it uh, as a zombie so you can travel. And then the only time you're happy is when you're traveling. But that's the reality for a lot of people. Let's just be honest, right? More than 740 Hundred thousand who quit in April worked in the leisure and hospitality industry, which includes jobs in hotels, bars, and restaurants, theme parks, and other entertainment venues. Jeremy Globomwitzki, I probably butchered his name, has ideas about why. Last week, after 26 years in the food service industry, he quit his job as a general manager of a breakfast place in San Diego. The pan 19 had a lot to do with it. Work had gotten so stressful, marked by scanned staffing and constant battles with unmasked customers. He contracted the 19 and brought it home to his wife and father-in-law. When California went into the lockdown for a second time in December, Jeremy was given the choice of working six days a week or taking furlough. He took the furlough. It was it was an easy decision. Yeah. And let me just say that um, I have friends, too, that work in the, you know, food industry business. And one person, one girl that I know, she made more money when she was furloughed, right? Or collecting unemployment or what have you. And she was able to travel more, spend more time with her children. And more importantly, she was investing her money, right? Her money into stocks and cryptocurrencies. And we'll talk more about that here in a moment too. At age 42, he got a glimpse of what life could be like if he didn't have to put in 50 to 60 hours a week at the restaurant and miss Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas morning with his family. I want to see my one-year-old and five-year-old's faces light up when they come out and see the tree and all the presents that I spend six hours at night assembling and putting out, said Jeremy, who got his first restaurant job at 16 as a dishwasher at the big boy chain in Michigan. So instead of returning to work last week, Jeremy resigned, putting an end to his long restaurant career and to the unemployment checks that have provided him a cushion to think about what he'll do next, okay? Now, you guys got to understand, why is this happening? And this is giving you some sort of an idea when you hear people like this talking about they want to spend more time with their kids, they want to spend more time traveling, they want to have more flexibility, right? We live in a, in a job market now where now you have the remote work changes. Now more people are working remotely than ever. Now this talks about Alyssa Casey, and I'm not going to read the whole article because I don't want to bore you, but she worked in Washington, D.C. for the government, but her family's in Illinois. And during this whole situation, she went back to Illinois and decided, I'm going to move to Illinois to be closer to my family, right? And so when you look at situations like this where you have eight out of 13 Burger King employees walking out because the corporate office decides, hey, we're not going to fix the air conditioner. And hey, while the air conditioner is broken, you're going to have to also wear a face mask. These are not humane conditions to work in. And look, guys, I will say this. I don't care if you work uh, at Burger King. I worked at Burger King when I was 16. Facts. I'm not ashamed to admit that. Um, I don't care if you... Uh, a dog walker. I don't care if you are a CEO for a software company making millions a, a year. There are certain conditions that should be humane, right? If you work in a freaking, you're making burgers and you're supposed to wear a mask and the air conditioning doesn't work, I'm sorry, guys, but that's just not safe. And you, as the customer, should be worried too because you don't want anybody sweating on your food, you know? And so this is the reality is um, a lot of these people, they're quitting their jobs. And now a lot of employers are looking to hire more people. And with what ha this new economy that we're looking at, right? And it, I think the economy is completely going to be different a year from now. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. By the way, I'm not a financial advisor or expert. I'm simply... 
going off of the trends, what I'm seeing, what I've been researching. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. But I think that there's going to be a new economy coming up here, especially within the next 10 to 20 years. That is completely different than what we know now. You got to remember, guys, 10 years ago, there wasn't no Uber or Lyft, right? For example, there wasn't no Airbnb a decade ago. Now you have those. I think 10 years ago, 10 years from now, there's going to be jobs and entrepreneurs in markets that aren't even in existing in existence yet. The reason why is because there's so much innovation and technology happening that there's going to be a need for that. And if you have somebody who is a trendsetter or an innovator, right, the, and innovators, we're talking about dealing with adoption, especially in an ever-changing uh, job environment, economic environment, uh, a lot of people who are going to be innovators or trendsetters, they're going to be eating, right? But I think things are going to get worse first before they get better because of these mandates, okay? Now, here's something that I want to look at. One of the things that I don't think people are rea realizing, these um, supposed experts, is, is that another thing that people have been doing is investing their money. If you look into the whole meme stock craze with GameStop and AMC, this has shown that people are tired of, you know, living and making subpar wages, getting mediocre 401k benefits, vacation packages, etc. And a lot of people are actually had taken the time to research different things. And I think the GameStop and AMC situation that happened earlier this year is a great example of that, where now people were working from home. Now they have more time to educate themselves on different forms of getting, you know, money on different forms of investments on, on different forms of getting revenue. And I've talked to people that I didn't even know were into GameStop or AMC, and they they telling me about it, and it's become a huge wave. And this is why a lot of these Wall Street hedge funds and these Wall Street gurus are in an uproar because they don't think that the average person should be in it because they don't want you to get the money. They don't want you to get the, the revenue or get different forms of income, right? When I look at gold and uh, silver increasing, right? And by the way, if you know anything about gold or silver, let me know because I'm doing my research. I think that gold and silver are going to have a great rally at the end of the year, right? Um, people are really looking for other forms of income because with Social Security set to expire in a decade and people realizing that their 401k might not help them with retirement, a lot of people are looking at different forms of investing. A lot of people are looking for different hedges, right, to protect themselves against possible inflation. And gold and silver has been around for hundreds of years as one of these things, especially now when you look at the times that we're in with these mandates and among other things that are happening currently in our society, right? Not just in our society, but all over the world. Let's keep it a buck. Now, a person that I, I always like to pay attention to is by the name of Michael Berry. Michael Berry is the guy who was in the movie called The Big Short, he was the guy who, during the recession, made hundreds of millions of bucks. I mean, he is a legendary investor, and a lot of people listen to him. A lot of people listen to him. He manages over $2 billion in assets through his hedge fund. And so when Michael Berry talks, because he predicted this in the first recession in 2008, and a lot of people didn't listen to him, right? So nowadays, when Michael Berry talks, a lot of people pay attention and so these are some of his favorite stocks, Walmart, Alphabet, the Kraft Heinz Company, CVS Health Corp Corporation, among many others. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that you should invest in what Michael Berry invests in, but I do like to pay attention to what Michael Berry is doing because this guy is obviously very knowledgeable, right? Now, he, he talks about the, the Geo Group included. And by the way, I'm not into stocks like that. I mean, I do have some stocks here and there, but you know, I, I do think that it's important to pay, pay attention to the stock market because it, it correlates with the crypto market, right? And that's just 
the reality. So what I think the the great resignation is 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 I think that people are tired with some of these conditions regarding their jobs and uh, imagine having to do a 45 hour commute again after you've been working remotely for a year or a year and a half you know how much gas people save do like working from home how much gas you save uh, also wear and tear in your vehicle right I mean you save a bunch of money and I know a brother shout out to him I, I won't mention his name but this brother works for a, a IT company and he's always in Colombia or Brazil. He's doing his thing, working remotely. He's got a beautiful Colombian woman. And this brother looks stress-free. He looks happy, right? I know another girl. Uh, she, you know, during the summer, when she had to work on the weekends, because I believe she does work a weekend a month, she would um, go to the cabin with her children. And so you would always see her, you know, working at the cabin you know, with the lake. But a lot of people are dealing with being burnt out. These conditions are, like, as I said, not humane. And so when you have a, a crew or work staff that's burnt out, they're not going to be doing their, their best job. You know, you see that Amazon has such a high turnover rate, and I talked about this before in another video, where Amazon has such a high turnover rate because of the the lack of, you know, wage and the lack of flexibility and the fact that they monitor you every second. I mean, literally, your whole shift is monitored. If you go on a pee break, I mean, they have like a thing that goes off and then somebody will come and find you. You know, I mean, it's it's very micromanaged and that causes a lot of stress to people because a lot of people then are more worried about rushing their job instead of doing a great job. And let me explain that. What that means is you're so worried about that you're on pace to perform, that even if the job may not be the best, instead of focusing on the quality of your work, you're focusing on the quantity of your work, okay? Let me say that again. Instead of focusing on the quality of your work, you're focusing on the quantity of your work. Now, let's take a look at today's crypto market. Um, you know, is everything is on a slight dip. Bitcoin is at $44,148. Ethereum is at $3,197. ADA is at $2.38. You know, there's been some issues I've heard with the Alonzo smart contracts. But overall, for the most part, the market is down. Solana is down. XRP is down. Me personally, I am not worried. Um, because if this goes down to $38,000 or $38,000, my model is always the same. I buy the dip. And I'm not, this is not financial advice. Once again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just telling you what I would do. Um, you know, Algorand was doing very well, but we, we have a lot of things on the red. And so it makes me curious if there's some FUD or some other news, right? Oh, and by the way, for those who want to learn more about crypto, I do have my Trendsetter cryptocurrency course out that allows you to research a cryptocurrency, how to buy a cryptocurrency, bonus interviews, with my millionaire mentor, as well as introduction to cryptocurrency in the history. I highly recommend that you check it out if you are interested. My name, once again, is Solomon Jones, a.k.a. SolarTV84. God bless you. God bless America. God bless the world. And I'm out. Peace.